good morning. Um, thank you very much for coming and I welcome you to uh, Nature Science Health 2 uh, exam based uh, contact classes. Um, and the code of the class is BES NSH12. Uh, my name is uh, Maria Shipandani, your tutor for this course. So as I said, this is actually an uh, exam-based contact classes. I'm going to give you highlights a few of um, points that I picked up during uh, my marking for the previous exams, and I'll, um, which is actually based on the exam. I'll also highlight a little bit about the policies um, and uh, go into the concept or topics that I want you to pay attention to and also avoid mistakes that other previous students actually did in the previous exams. So, but I should make, uh, tell you that I'm not gonna give you uh, questions uh, that are in the exam or not either answers, but this is actually just an, a contact class that is actually based on the exam. So as I said, um, uh, my name is Maria Shipandani, and you can reach me at that number on the board, 081-26-12950, or you can email me at shipandanim at yahoo.co.uk in case you have questions that you need uh, to uh, um, uh, have clarity on or just uh, a topic that you probably want me to explain further you can always uh, give me a call or email me to that uh, email address. Alternatively, you can also email me at mshipandeni at unam.na. So as I said, I'm gonna take you through the module assessment policy. Uh, with the module assessment policy, as you know, you need a continuous assessment uh, mark that is actually consisting of one exam paper uh, I mean, one assignment, and that assignment, um, a thing um, of the opinion that you handed already in the assignment. The assignment was weighing 130 miles, and you need 50% uh, of the continuous assessment mark is actually you need it for the admission to the exam. And the duration of the exam is actually three hours, and the total marks for the exam is actually 130 marks. So the final pass mark is actually uh, 50. You should have 50% is actually required, which is calculated by 60% six, uh, by 60 that is coming from the examination mark, and then 40% that's coming from the continuous assessment mark. And a sub-minimum mark of 50% must be attained in the exam. And uh, here I'm calling you to actually, when you are in the exam, try to read the questions and follow the instructions that are on the question paper. So because I didn't highlight the instructions about the questions, so when you get your question paper, try to read the question uh, instructions of the question paper and follow the instructions as stipulated. So um, I also want to uh, in, uh, highlight some of the important notes um, that you have to take note of uh, about the exam for 2018. So the exam, uh, uh, the exam is actually structured as follows. We have short questions, and with these short questions, you have uh, the following verbs like mention, define, name, list, describe, distinguish, or compare. And you also have essay type of question. With essay type of questions, you uh, you uh, actually have certain verbs like explain, discuss, etc. And as I said already, like the total mark of the exam is actually 130. So with this exam, uh, you need to pay attention to the learning, attention to the learning outcomes of every unit in the study guide. Uh, 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 you have a study guide, so look at the learning outcome of every unit and try to understand and make sure that you know or you understand these learning outcomes and you can answer questions from each unit as it comes. So another thing that I already mentioned, try to read the instructions very carefully and uh, 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 answer uh, right neatly as legible as you can. So and 
as a teacher you always have to use practical uh, examples where necessary to strengthen your your answers and provide sufficient answers to the questions look at how much ma how the marks that are allocated to each question and you should uh, provide a sufficient answer to, to that question because if you check the mark that is allocated to a question it will determine the length of your answer and uh, don't write too much or too little so you have to actually check at the marks so if the, the, the question is weighing five marks don't write uh, too little like com like you are writing for a two mark question question so and you should not write too much like it's a 20 mark question so you should just know how much to write so the marks actually are, uh, uh, give you an uh, idea of how the length about the the length of your question I mean of your answer so now I'm going to talk about uh, the exam hints with this exam hint as, as a as a explained it's about some of the topics that are thought or topics or concept that are thought um, I must uh, highlight today and to to give you hints as well as to uh, highlight few uh, uh, mistakes that uh, other students previous students did so you can you can avoid or you shouldn't make the same mistake so in in our study guide we actually have a unit on teaching and teaching strategy with these uh, um, teaching strategies the these teaching strategies are actually uh, can be used uh, uh, in in the senior primary level and with these teaching strategies the lesson is for these sections is actually for you to be able to discuss and apply these teaching strategies so these methods are commonly used methods that are used uh, for instructions so and these methods are like brainstorming and demonstration you have large group uh, discussions you have lectures uh, role play games and so forth so these are the teaching methods so with these teaching methods you need to understand the method and how you should execute it so you should understand each method and you should be able to execute it maybe you can be asked one method or two methods i'm not sure which method you'll be asked so you what you have to do is try to understand each of the method and how you can actually execute it like for instance uh demonstration like how how what how do you describe how you should be able to discuss the demonstration and how actually to execute it and large group discussion large group discussions like an art of seeking information that actually stimulate thinking and elaboration of all level uh, and you are trying to actually uh, seek ideas and the learner should actually have le uh, give lessons to a certain idea that you are actually discussing so you can achieve a certain objective so you have a set of objectives and you are trying to seek ideas from learners so you should be able to discuss what that uh, discussion or what is that large group discussions is all about and also lectures lectures like when you are giving a presentation so how is that teaching method how can you execute it uh, successfully so all i'm saying is that you we, we have those teaching methods that are actually very common as a method of instruction and you should be able to explain each method and actually discuss how you can actually execute it uh, successfully and another topic under teaching and teaching strategies is uh, encouraging collaboration during deep learning so you might be asked to discuss how you can actually encourage collaboration during 
uh, deep learning. So with these collaborations, it, it promotes real world learning experience and learners develop skills by encouraging collaboration. Collaborations like co cooperations. Let them discuss, present ideas, consider points of views, and make decisions in order to increase their stake into or on, on their own learning. So it makes make it meaningful, personal, relevant, and seek opportunities actually to collaborate with experts and other learners across town or across the, the country or across the whole world. So just try to uh, make it very meaningful, personal and relevant to, to them and seek opportunities so you can collaborate so they understand what is about uh, uh, collaborations. So in that uh, note, I'm just saying that you should be able to discuss how you can encourage collaborations during deep learning. And uh, we have another topic about uh, uh, support of special need or special uh, needs learners are actually um, capable of success. So we have to support them. As a teacher, you should support learners with special need. So how do you support learners with special need? So you can uh, work closely with the special education with the special education department and any other aids that were, that might uh, uh, work or that who might work with that learner like any other uh, group that you might work with a learner, you may read the learner's IEP, Individual Education Plan, to learn what modifications that are needed to, to be made. You have to talk to the parents and learners to motivate the learner. Talk to the parent and learner to motivate the learners and allow learners choice in your activities and you, you should use brain-based learning strategies that will stretch their mind and be um, very encouraging, be enthusiastic in your encouragement, focus on what learn, on the learner's strength and be supportive of their, of their weaknesses and let, learner, let, let each learner know that you believe in him or her and then reward them when do good. So that's actually just how you can actually support uh, uh, learners with special needs. And these points are actually uh, uh, coming from your study guide. So just pay attention to, to that unit as well. So, and we have a unit about self-esteem, peer pressure and subsistence abuse. So with uh, this uh, uh, unit, um, I actually uh, try to uh, draw your attention to peer pressure. The peer pressure can either be negative or positive peer pressure. Negative pre peer pressure actually read into uh, destructive behavior. And positive peer pressure is, is the positive one that benefits uh, the, the, that uh, uh, one can benefit from the peers, like uh, developing uh, uh, skills and maybe doing things in a group that are actually benefiting them. So, so we have both negative and positive peer pressure. So, and with this uh, negative, precisely with the negative peer pressure, you need to assist learners and show them or teach them how to resist negative peer pressure. How can they deal or assist with negative peer pressure? And with this, uh, when when we are talking about peer pressure, they also you also need to actually indicate or uh, educate your learners on how to communicate their boundaries effectively, because when they are in peers, when they are in groups, they try to conform to the values of a certain group. And if they know that it's, it's they, they know their boundaries and they know that they have to withdraw from the group, but uh, because of this peer pressure, it can be hard to communicate their, 
their choice. So you have to teach learners how to communicate their uh, boundaries uh, 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 effectively. So that include by acknowledging, like let them know that they should acknowledge their own rights without ignoring the rights of others. You, they can have, they have respect of themselves and others. They should listen and talk when they are communicating their boundaries and express both positive and negative feeling. You make me feel this. Let them express both positive and negative feelings and let them be self-confident without being ignorant whenever they are trying to communicate their boundaries. They should just say no uh, when it's, it's a no and um, they should communicate that assentively. Apart from uh, within that uh, context, we also have issues of alcohol and subsistence use. So with alcohol and subsistence use in that unit, I mean in that uh, section, I want you to pay attention to uh, the reasons why people use alcohol because um, I noticed that um, we, we uh, most, some of the times I asked uh, questions for people to discuss or to give reasons why uh, people actually abuse or abuse uh, abuse, alcohol, or subsistence. And this question can be actually general and you end up with general answers, so which are more generalized. So I just want you to actually come and pay a little bit of attention to the reasons why people actually use alcohol. It can be because of availability, and uh, because it's mostly available to uh, people, it can be available. There are a lot of bars around, and it parties. There, there's a lot of alcohol, so it can be that. It can also be because people want to escape from their problems. They just want to to forget about their problems. Sometimes it it's because of the image that it portrays, and and you you have several reasons that people actually use, uh, uh, try to give whenever they are abusing alcohol. So uh, I call you, uh, uh, your, your attention to that uh, section uh, to just uh, go in talk about the alcohol abuse. The reason, and when people are abusing alcohol, this uh, uh, alcohol abuse has an uh, impact on human health, life, as well as relationship. It can uh, uh, result to uh, uh, breaking of relationships. It can have impact on the lungs or human health in general and life. Most of the learners can even drop out of the school. They get poor performance, not least because they can't perform, it's because they, 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 they are abusing alcohol and that comes first than their education. So this uh, alcohol abuse actually have an impact on human health, life, as well as relationship. So if you are asked to discuss about the impact of human health, uh, of how, uh, impact of alcohol abuse on human health, life, and relationship. Just try to explain uh, this impact both on human health and you also talk about life as well as relationship. Because most in most cases I found that students actually just focus probably on human health or life and forget about other factors. So when you ask about the impact, try to get uh, points from both um, uh, uh, both uh, aspects like human health, talk about human health, talk about life and as well as relationships. And with this, also in this topic, uh, you can also, uh, you might be asked also to discuss how school can actually assist in the prevention of subsistence abuse by learners. And this can be probably by just having uh, more of uh, awareness and also try to keep students or learners uh, busy at school uh, and so forth. So these there uh, actually also, it's also in your study guides. Try to pay attention to that sections, both on the impact and reasons as well as how schools can actually assist in the prevention of alcohol abuse. 
and we have a topic on matter, sunlight, and forces. And the, this uh, in this unit, uh, I took a, a bit of information on both matter, material, sunlight, and forces. And everyday material can actually be classified by different features or properties. So you might be asked to compare properties of materials, and materials we mean like paper, grass, cotton, plastic, wood, and metal. So in with, with these materials, you, you can compare the properties, then these properties can be uh, hardness, the texture, the color, the raster, raster is like it, the shininess or it grows, uh, grow, and the, the flexibility, the smell, uh, uh, brittleness, and variability. So you might be asked to compare properties based on the, I mean, to compare materials based on their properties. So compare properties of materials such as paper, grass, cotton, or plastic based on the then your comparison will be based on their properties. So comparing this property will actually help us decide if a material is suitable for a, for, for a certain function that you want to perform. For instance, if you want a waterproof materials, you know what to use in case you are in an area where that is most, or you are maybe demonstrating to students and you need waterproof material. Maybe you need to carry water. So you can't drink water in a paper uh, like depending on what materials it is so you need waterproof material or something that that can uh, that's not gonna be uh, destroyed by water so I uh, call you that uh, to, 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 to pay attention to that and I think I put a, a table here which actually compare materials or, or, or of you have a comparison of materials on, on the first column, and you have uh, different materials that can be paper, grass, cotton, plastic, wood, and metal. So with these properties, like for instance, hardness, you have, uh, for, if you are comparing, let's say we are comparing paper and grass, because they are very close, so we don't have to look at the other part of the table. So the hardness, the paper is soft and the glass is hard. And then you have texture, they are all smooth. And then you have color, paper can come in various colors, in numerous colors. And a glass is see-through. And then last is uh, paper, no, it does, it does not have that shiny. And, uh, uh, and yes to the, to the glass. And flexibility, papers are more flexible than the glass. The uh, brittleness, uh, papers don't really break and uh, glass do break. So those are actually just properties that, of materials that you can actually compare. So you might be asked to compare materials or you may be asked to list it, some of to list some of the properties the way your mat the materials can be compared. And then we have part on the sunlight. We say sunlight is a mixture of different colors, and it appears as white, but then this white color, the white light, can be separated in spectrum of colors. So it can be separated by either using a grass map a grass prisma, a compact disc, or a drop of oil on water. So hitting a grass on a, a different lego, a angle, it, it gives a reflection of light. And the color, the way the, 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 the spectrum appears, it depends on the wavelength. So you might be asked to give a demonstration or an experiment, like plan an experiment or a demonstration for learners to discuss how sunlight can actually uh, be uh, uh, separated or can be separated by using a grass prisma. So in, if you are asked that question, you must be able to list the, the, the materials that you need. You need a prisma, you need a project, a project screen, you need a light source and a slit. So you should be able to actually discuss or give a demonstration of how you are going to use those uh, material actually to illustrate or to demonstrate to learners how sun, uh, sunlight or how light can actually be uh, separated into different uh, 
into different spectrum of colors. The colors can be either red, can not either can it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, eco, and violet. So you should be able to actually uh, demonstrate um, how you are going to uh, use a prisma uh, to separate colors in different to to separate a uh, white light into different colors. So you have to position your project and you have to also uh, place the light source so it, it goes on a 90 degree on the one side of the prisma and you uh, and then the beam of light goes through uh, the the light you have a light source on the on the side of of the of the slide and then it goes through the the slit the beam of the narrow beam of light will fall on the side of the of the prisma which then uh, reflect on the reflecting side of the pr prisma and once it hits then it can it will actually uh, illustrate or separate into different color just make sure that you understand the method or how you can separate the the Prisma, uh, the the light, the white light into different colors using the prisma. So list the material. After listing the material, discuss or explain how you are going to demonstrate to learners. So we also have a topic on wind, uh, water, and pollution. Water. Uh, in this topic, uh, I just want you to look at the phases of water cycle. Try to. Uh, uh, you should know the features and different phases of water cycle and you should know um, uh, the causes of water pollution and uh, the source of water pollution or, or that and how we can actually purify water. So with water pollution it can be uh, water, the sources of water pollution can either be organic impurities, can be biological impurities or inorganic impurities like dirt and sediment, and biological impurities that are composed of bacteria, viruses and parasites, and organic impurities, these are chemicals that are, can actually come from agriculture or industry. And uh, with purifications, uh, to these Purification is done to make water drinkable. So there are actually several methods of purifying water. It can be iodine, it can be uh, uh, chlorine, can be used, can be water filters, boiling and distillations. Those are some of the methods that can be used to purify water. And just try to uh, read into details on how you can. Uh, how water can be actually purified. You might be asked to just list the, uh, the, the ways in uh, 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 the, how water can be purified just by listing how, uh, how we can actually purify water or you might be asked to explain the ways of purifying water. So there is wind. On the, on the sections of wind, uh, wind can have benefits. There, is a, there are benefits of moving wind. Like for instance, it cool ourselves uh, on, during summer. It's so like it can be hot. So when the, there is moving wind, it cools ourselves. It can disperse seed. And uh, for spot lovers, uh, it can be used uh, for spot like uh, wind uh, surfing or flying the, the Kites. It can also be used to improve the quality of air we breathe in. It can be used for wind energy, and it's also involved involved in uh, crowd mo movements. So there are benefits of wind, and there are also uh, uh, um, uh, distracting or, or dangerous or storm that can uh, the distinct dangers of wind and like for instance hurricane and tornadoes they can uh, cause harm to the people it can kill people and human it can uh, destroy houses uh, and building and and contaminate water so just make sure that you understand those uh, uh, danger uh, or the dangers of the storm uh, hurricane tornadoes and um, 
There is also an issue of uh, sources of air pollution, so you should be able to uh, indicate the sources of air pollution, like burning fossil fuel, agricultural activities, the exhaust from factories, industries, and also uh, uh, from mining operations like dust. So, and this uh, can have impact on our lungs. And so you should be able to actually indicate uh, some of the impacts or discuss how uh, this uh, air pollution can impact our lungs. Uh, we have a section on scientific process. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about this part. And what is important here is just you should be able to name and list some of the important apparatus or equipment or, uh, that are uh, that are important uh, for scientific process and that are actually most available in our lab and also you should be able to you should able to indicate or to uh, show uh, explain their uses what what is the use of uh, the the like for instance you have a beaker which is number 12 there so you should be able to uh, uh, identify as well as mention the uses of those scientific uh, of those laboratory apparatus and you also need to understand or be able to demonstrate or explain some of the scientific process like uh, uh, the distillations and filtration then we have an uh, issue about ecosystem and with ecosystem uh, we sh you should be able to define what the ecosystem is, and in the ecosystem, uh, the, uh, under that uh, under that topic, we have food chain and food web. Food web, you should be able to distinguish between food web and food chain. So that's an th uh, important thing, and and you should also be able to understand what are the human activities. Uh, uh, you should be able to 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 mention some of the human activities that actually influences the ecosystem negatively. So, like for instance, agriculture, industry, fishing, and mining. So you should the, these activities can actually affect the the environment uh, in a negative way, especially when they are performed in excessive and unsustainable way. It can may lead to global warming, pollution and extinctions of species that because of the consequences of our behavior. So, and we, we, within that topic also, you should be able to discuss or to uh, actually list or mention uh, how we can prevent the destructions of habitat or preserve biodiversity by either reducing or eliminate use of household chemicals, recycle waste, reduce amount of waste that we produce, and uh, reduce carbon uh, for, uh, footprint. We also have uh, animals. In this uh, topic of animals, we have uh, criteria that are used for scienti uh, by scientists to classify animals into groups. And uh, this question is kind of tricky because uh, most of the students don't really get it right. But here, uh, animals are actually classified uh, in on groups. Like uh, you should be able to mention that they are classified based on the backbone and the asymmetry. The uh, internal features as, as well as the external features and their uh, pattern behavior, whether they are carnivores, herbivores, or minivores. So those are the, actually the, the points that I look for when it comes to these classifications. So they are classified based on their backbones, whether they have a backbone or they don't have backbone. Then the scientists look at the uh, symmetry, like how the body patterns are actually uh, body parts of animals are arranged. Then they look at the internal and actually uh, as well as the external features and then their behavior pattern. So, and in that same uh, topic, we, we talk about the, the wildlife, the importance of wild, wildlife. They have both consumptive and con non-consumptive benefits to the community or, for instance, uh, to the nation at large. So you should be able to list some of the, imp the, uh, the importance of wildlife as well as uh, uh, how, why, why is it wildlife important to the community or the nation at large.
at large. And we have a, 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 a topic about endangered species. Here you should just be able to actually define what endangered species is and give uh, some of the examples of the endangered species of Namibia. And uh, uh, you have wild dog, black rhino, olive, and puku that are actually uh, some of the endangered species of Namibia. And uh, the, the last topic is, uh, that I put uh, today here to illustrate on is about human body and health. So human body is actually made of 11 important organ systems, which is including uh, secretory, respiratory, digestive, excretory, nervous, and endocrine system. They also have immune system, secretor system, and so forth. So. Um, we have to know the human body system and the main components of the circulatory system. You have the heart, the blood, the vessels. In the vessels, you have artery, veins, and capillary. So you should be able to uh, mention the components of the circulatory system and also give uh, their functions. What, what, what do they do in the body? And uh, last, uh, we have an uh, issue of smoking, and smoking can actually destroy our lungs. So with smoking, uh, in, in this topic, you should be able to explain how uh, the, the danger of smoking to, to our health. So smoking destroys the cilia, the tiny hair, which lines the upper way and pro uh, the upper way, airways and, and protect uh, against infections. So you, you should be able to actually explain how smoking can damage our, our lungs. So I have some point there, like smoking uh, permanently damages uh, air sacs in the lungs and making it hard to breathe. It also reduces the ability of the body to stretch, which makes it hard for, for, for us to, to inhale. So it may also lead to uh, lung cancer. And, uh, and you have signs of, of lung damage can that uh, by smoking, as, as you can see on, on the picture given on the side. So, uh, all in all, I, uh, that, that was it. Um, you should pay attention. I'm not saying you should only pay attention to those units that I uh, picked up, but uh, um, you should pay attention to all the learning outcomes, as I have said already. Pay attention to all the learning outcomes that are stipulated in, in, in your study guide, and make sure that you understand uh, or all the learning outcomes. And in case you have questions and don't hesitate to call me, you can call me and send me an SMS to 081-2612-950. Or you can actually email me to mshipandeni at unam.na. Or you can email me to shipandenim at yahoo.co.uk. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best with your exam.